Hey everybody, so before I start this video, I just have two announcements. Uh, one is that this last week I was on the Corn Stars podcast again. Uh, I'm going to link the podcast down below. I would love if you guys would go watch it. Um, it means a lot to me and we had a lot of fun talking about Motley and Stripe and other things going on in our collections. So please check them out. And also I will be going to the NARBC show in Tinley. I will not be vending, but I will be there just hanging out, hanging around. So if you would like to see me, just sort of let me know and maybe we can, you know, run into each other on purpose or on accident. Either way, uh, on to the video. Hey everybody, Sari here. So this is going to be a somewhat short video on the different types of ghosts that we have in Corn Snakes. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I have a website, sarahsnakeshop.com, if you would like to buy um, Corn Snake Morph books. I've written two of them, they're on there. I also have snakes available right now, merch, stuff like that. You can check that out there. I also wanna thank reptilinks.com for helping to sponsor this channel. You guys are amazing. And uh, if anybody would like to use my code, sarahsnake27 at checkout at reptilinks.com, uh, you get $5 off and I also get a percentage so it helps you and it helps me and there's also a $100 money back guarantee if they don't work out for you for any reason. Also thank you so much to our members I'm going to put you guys over here uh, you guys help make this uh, whole channel possible thank you so much for financially contributing to the channel uh, for anybody who would like to become a member you can click join under any video. It's $2 a month and members get their own video that nobody else gets to see, as well as getting access to live videos after they are over. So if you're interested in uh, being a part of a Q&A, uh, but you can't make it, being a member will help you go back and like watch that Q&A if you would like to. And if you can't financially contribute to the channel, that's perfectly fine. Um, it's not gonna change what content you get. This channel has always been dedicated to educational corn snake content and it always will be. So now I'm going to jump into the different types of ghosts that we have. I'm gonna start out with just our standard ghost. Now ghost is anorethristic type A mixed with hypomelanistic type A. I'm not going to go through and compare all the different hypos and stuff. This is just going to be snakes that we know are a combination of anory and hypo. So the typical ghost corn snake is just gray on gray with dark gray saddle borders and uh, checkers as well. They usually have a light blue or gray iris as well as a black pupil. Sometimes they can hatch out with ruby pupils, but they usually grow out of that as they age. So one of the first types of selectively bred ghost forms that did not include another mutation is actually the pastel ghost. Pastel ghosts are bred to have lighter, more pastel colors. So they're bred to have sort of a pinky, peachy tone to their saddles, as well as have bright yellows that come in, these pastel yellows that will come in on their face, cheeks, and sides. It's not so common to see pastels anymore uh, because they just aren't different enough from your typical ghost, but uh, they are still out there and they're very pretty in my opinion. Another type of ghost that you really don't see anymore is the Silver Queen ghost. Um, at first, a lot of people weren't really sure what a Silver Queen ghost was, what made it up, why does it look so different, but it is generally thought that it's because it's Keys Lines Ghost. Uh, Keys has overall sort of a hypo look to it. It's much lighter colored than just your typical normal. They also usually have thinner saddle borders and sometimes reduced belly checkers. And so breeding that into Ghost Lines gives this sort of very silvery light colored snake called the Silver Queen. Now a line of ghosts that used to be popular but doesn't exist anymore, which makes me really sad, by the way, is the Bartley line of ghost snakes. The Bartley's line of ghosts was one of the few lines of ghosts that we saw that actually had really thick borders. Now there's just not too many ghost types that have thick borders. And the reason for that is because hypomelanistic type A often reduces the size of the borders or how pronounced the borders can be. So the Bartley line of ghosts was actually really unique in that it had all of those colors that we really enjoy in ghosts, but it had those really thick borders and you just don't see that really anymore. It's really unfortunate because a few years ago, I want to say back in 2015, 2016, uh, I actually had a pair of Bartleys and I actually had some babies and um, decided to not keep them. I sent them back to Bartley Reptiles. Um, I had gotten them through a friend. It's a long story, but I sent them to Bartley Reptiles in hopes that they would continue to breed that project. And then they pretty much immediately gave up on it. So that just makes me sad that we don't really have these beauties anymore in the hobby. Uh, the last one that I want to talk about is the Spectre Ghost, and this originated in Kathy Love's Naples Corn. Um, Naples, the Naples Corn was a sort of hypo-looking female that she bought in a pet store and then bred into ghost lines, and they also have very thick borders, 
thankfully there's still people who uh, breed these but most people have unfortunately in my opinion bred them into coral lines and so um, you don't get too many pure specters anymore there are some people working on them though and they are absolutely beautiful there is uh, some hypotheses on what causes the like look of the specter corn snake um, they have these olive toned saddles and uh, my opinion on that is that it's caused by green blotched potentially uh, maybe some heavy frosting plus green blotched something like that but that's still unknown we don't know that for sure so i'm not gonna like put that down as fact i also think that it's possible that the original specter also had a red factor mutation like without being mixed into other coral lines they were already pretty naturally pink donovan winterberg worked on these the most and his hypothesis was that there was some sort of red coat thing happening with them because some red coats did come out of that line but it could be the same or it could be separate we're not really sure another hypothesis that i have is if you take out the olive color and the pink of the specter you will get something that looks almost exactly like the bartley's and so i'm wondering if bartley's sort of ended up with some of that and then just like bred those colors out in order to get their look i'm not really sure uh, but it'd be super cool if someone out there with a the specter line could maybe try on that try that project because i really miss bartley's i'll be honest i miss bartley's line ghosts now there are other things that we consider to be like ghost types kind of. Ice is one of those. It used to be called ice ghost and that's actually uh, lava instead of hypomelanistic type A mixed with anerythristic. Uh, there's also like, ultramel anery, ultramel uh, or ultra anery, both of those being hypotypes um, mixed with anery, but we don't call that any kind of ghost. It's just ultramel anery. Pretty much any hypotype mixed with anery, like we also have strawberry anery, which a lot of people think is a type of ghost. And we also have things mixed with charcoal, such as like phantom but again that's not what we consider to be a type of ghost necessarily ghost types in this video are all just hypomelanistic type a mixed with anerythristic type a and they all look very different and i think that's really interesting i hope you did too so thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video soon